little clock going here. All right, I think we're live now. Excellent. Thank you. All right, folks. Get ready to start here in just a second. My rig on and off. Hit do not disturb on my phone. And I think we're ready. Praise the Lord. Hope everybody's doing good this morning. I apologize for the glare on my glasses and uh, on my head, <laughs> but I can't do anything about that. Praise the Lord. Okay. It's about 9.01. I think we'll go ahead and start. So uh, for those of you who don't know me, I'm Pastor Jay. I'm the executive pastor here at Maranatha Fellowship. Thank you for joining in today on our devotion. I'm going to pray and, and get started. So if you would bow your head with me, let's pray. Father, thank you, unless you're driving, of course. And then just listen in. Father, thank you for being our God, our dad, our creator, our sustainer of life. Father, we're thankful for everything that you've done for us and through us and to us, Lord. We're, we're thankful that we get to spend another day on this earth that you created. Father, we praise you and worship you today. There's nobody like you. You're on the throne. You're in control. Lord, we trust you and love you. We worship you today. We ask that you be with us. May your Holy Spirit teach us something today from your word. Uh, may your word penetrate our hearts, Lord, that would change our behavior and make us more like your son, Jesus. And we ask this in his name, Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Well, praise the Lord. The last time uh, I did devotions was about, oh, almost maybe three, two or three weeks ago, and I talked about Elijah. And if you remember that story, God told Elijah to stand in a cutout place of a mountain. And then there was this earthquake. But God was not in the earthquake. And then there was a tremendous wind, but God was not in the wind. And then there was a raging fire, but again, God was not in the fire. And then there was a still small voice, and God was in that still small voice. That's not how, you know, we think God would communicate, be a still small voice, you know, the creator of the universe, the biggest, most powerful thing that we can imagine. But that's how he communicates with us most times. And I know in Scripture that he did communicate that way in times past. In Job, he communicated through a whirlwind. In Exodus, he communicated and made his presence known by an earthquake. He spoke in a voice that sounded like thunder in Samuel and Psalms. In Psalm 77, his voice is compared to both thunder and a whirlwind. And in Revelation, the fourth chapter... We're told that lightning and thunder proceed from the throne in heaven. But to us, his children, he speaks, speaks in a small voice. Oh, we wish he would make a loud proclamation, uh, but that's not how he operates with his children. So how, how do we hear his still small voice? Psalms 46 has the answer. Psalms 46.10 says, Be still and know that I am God. I will be exalted among the nations. I will be exalted in the earth. That's Psalms 46.10. We have to be quiet, still, uh, observant, ready to hear. We're not going to hear if we're always talking. You know, I'm sure some of you have friends like that, and that's all they do is talk. And you can't get a word in edgewise. Or perhaps your children are running around playing, and you've got something in, important to tell them, uh, but they're... They won't be quiet, and they won't be still, and so therefore you can't communicate to them. You've got something to say, but they're not going to hear it because they're running around or they're screaming and yelling and talking and playing, whatever. So you'll tell them, be still, be quiet. You may take their face in your hand and say, look at me when I'm talking to you. <laughs> you want them to hear what you're saying. God is the same way. He wants us to be still and to be quiet and to hear what it is that he has to say because he has something to say. We must have the posture or being aware that he's going to communicate to us. If we're expecting God to communicate, uh, we'll be ready when he does. But we have to listen and be in a posture to receive. Now, when I say that God wants to talk to us, some people think that they'll hear an audible voice. 
uh, and that can be, but that's not been my experience. Uh, for most people, it's a knowing, it's a sensing, it's a it's something, a scripture that you're reading comes alive to you, or great peace floods your heart, or you just have a knowing about it. And there's been a few times in my life where I've heard God speak, and one time it was just almost audible. I could have sworn that somebody was behind me, that God was behind me, but of course, <laughs> He is always with us and always around us. But it's not necessarily an audible voice, but God wants to communicate to us, His kids. A well-known scripture that can, we can apply to this concept is found in Psalms 91. He who dwells in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. Think about that. We can dwell in God's secret place, in His shadow. Verse 2, I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge and my fortress, my God, in Him I will trust. When I read this scripture, I get a picture of resting in the shadow of God. You know, I was out working in the garden, and it was so hot. Uh, the sun was beating down on me, and I was working, and I was sweating. And then I got into the shadow of this big magnolia tree slash bush that we have, and there was instant relief. And I feel like that with God. You know, if we can get into His shadow, we can stand next to Him, near Him, maybe looking at His face, but abiding in His shadow, there's a lot of peace that comes from that. It's not a picture of striving or rushing around or being concerned. We're resting in His shadow. It's not a place of fear or anxiety. He is our refuge and our fortress. There's a story, story of a little boy. One day he was trying to pick up this pretty good sized rock for his size. And he said to his dad, who was standing there, he, he says, I can't do it. And the dad said, son, you can do it. And the boy strained and he tried. And he said, dad, it's too heavy. The father insisted, son, now you can do it. He said, it's too heavy. It's just too heavy. And the father said, you're not using all your strength. And the son says, dad, why are you always saying that I'm not using all my strength? It's too heavy. The father replied, and get this, I know you're not using all of your strength because you haven't asked me to help you yet. See, there's more strength available to us than what we have uh, inherently in our body. He is our strength. Our key test this morning, text this morning has been Psalms 46. Let's read it again. Psalms 46.10. Be still and know that I am God. I will be exalted in the nations. I will be exalted in the earth. And here's the next verse that we didn't read. Verse 11. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our refuge. The first chapter says God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in times of trouble. Take comfort that not only will he communicate with us and that he wants to communicate with us, but that he is with us and he will keep us. We've been on a scripture pastor as well as that he will keep us in perfect peace whose mind is stayed upon him because we trust him. And I have put my place, my hope, my trust in God. I hope you have too. Uh, he's the only thing that matters. Amen. I hope you've been encouraged. I encourage you to go back and uh, look at the scriptures and uh, meditate on them a little bit. God may show you something new and different. Uh, he may give you a deeper understanding of his truths in this word. So I pray you have a great day, a wonderful day. I bless you in Jesus' name, and we'll see you later. Bye-bye.